All right. Uh, this is an interview for PuertoReggae.com with Johnny Dredd, who was playing uh, last Saturday, October 3rd, at the Anfi, the Puerto Rico Reggae Fest. Esto, Johnny, let's start uh, you from Cuba. You're uh, born and raised there? Well, if you look around, this is my aunt's house, and they're pretty much from Cuba, but I was born in the United States All right. uh, in 1959 when, when Fidel took power. Uh, all four of my families, Tia Berta, uh, Tio Cuco, who's in Venezuela, and Tia Silvia, who went to Chicago, and we went to Miami. So that was the real mess up, you know, that all four families separated yeah, because yeah. of one one problem. And it's really unfortunate because I would really, really have liked to have come to Puerto Rico because it's the closest to Cuba. You know, the ambiente, la jola, la el mar, la palma. Uh -huh. It would have been a good vibe. But we went to Miami and, you know, it is what it is. I'm 45 now, so you can't go back. But checking it out, I, I, I my heart is, is, is still in the Caribbean. My heart is still with my Latin world. And for a long time, I didn't realize that because I was Americanizado, you know. Uh -huh. But I, I figured out, I found out that, hey, you know, I'm not really a gringo, you know. I'm a gringo because I live here, and it's good to know the gringo story so I can, you know, turn it around. Yeah. But I have to get back to my roots, you know, my roots, my Latin roots. So over the last couple of years, last 10 years, I've been going a lot to Costa Rica, to Venezuela, mm -hmm. um, and, and sowing my seeds back into Central and Latin America. And of course, Puerto Rico, you know, I've been wanting to come because of my family. You know? Yeah, yeah. So it was a really blessed night to the night that I could come and my aunt be there and you know, my cousins, you know, could have been seen, you know, Progreso y la locura de Johnny Trey. No, you know, it was great at the concert, yeah. you know, all your family. Yeah, I took was, a picture of all the family. That was great. You know, it's funny because you do things in your mind and you think maybe one day, you know, this will happen, this will happen. And, and it's happening because I'm, I'm reaching that point where being recognized for my efforts all through the years and like now when I go to Venezuela it's the same thing you know, my aunt and my uncle they come to the show and you come down you know you be close and they go to go Juan Carlo and I'm like whoa that's my family <laughs> and there they are I'm like, oh. so it's really ironic to see uh, that here I am in my in my world in my in my Rasta and there is my family that they've known me from little so for them it's they understand more than my mom. My yeah. mom, but I need to get it better. And I'm like, well, it's, it's not because of nothing. It's just because it's the story and it's the vibe, you know, the beard. And uh, it just, I can't see myself any other way. God gave me my beard. Uh -huh. He didn't give me a razor. And he certainly didn't tell me to pluck my eyebrows. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But um, to, to take my to take my beard off is like a slap in the face, you know. Mm -hmm. Las mujeres tienen su cara limpia. Ajá. Uh -huh. Bien, pero nosotros tenemos su. Esa es la belleza del hombre, me imagino. Pero bueno. Good. Oh, yes, Don't ask me, man. But no, it's good. I, you answered what one question I was afraid to ask, Juan Carlos. Yeah. So, <laughs> Juan Carlos. And uh, how about your uh, musical background? Where uh, where did you start with the music? Well, I, I never, I never played music. I still don't really play music, and I don't ever say that I'm a musician. Like, um, I said, my story is very different. My story is, um, I played basketball. I was a very good basketball player. Really? Yeah, yeah so all, all through. So still, um, still um, our age. I think. I'll, I'll take you, my little man. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'll assassinate you. I played college basketball. I don't know, man. In, in but Florida. I didn't do. <laughs> no, that's what I'm trying to tell you. It's, I got to a very good level. Yeah, yeah. But I knew great. that I wasn't going to be a professional because to be a professional in the NBA, unless you're like Arroyo, uh -huh, uh -huh. you know, he's got some real, real hops and he's got a special gift. Yeah. But I realized that I wasn't going to make it to the big show and so maybe I should think about doing something else that maybe I can reach another kind of big show. But I never thought... You know, I'm gonna do this and get to there to do that for those certain reasons. No, it was more. Um, it was a fascination. Bob Marley, you know. When I was 13, I met the music. I met the man, and it just it influenced me. And little by little, you know, all my friends were listening to, you know, all the music that they listened to, and I listened to it too. I grew up on the Beatles, the Stones, you know, everything, Rush, uh, the Police, you two, everything, but. Bob, I say Bob more than anybody else. And Bob is a special person. Reggae is reggae, but Bob is Bob. Yeah. And every once in a while, somebody like that comes around. 
So to say reggae influenced me, yeah, reggae is cool, and Rastafarianism is the greatest because Rafa, Rastafarianism in, encompasses all the story. It's one story. The God can only have one story. You can't have the Muslim story, the Julio story, a Catholic or a Cristiano. There's gonna be one story. Uh -huh. So Rasta has all that. It encompasses all in the beginning and in the end. And when we check nowadays, Ethiopia, you know, is the Garden of Eden. That's where Earth begins. Mm -hmm. And right now, in this day, Ethiopia has a big story that will soon reveal. Right now, coming now. Yeah. But you'll soon see. So. But asking me back till I got to the music, um, like I said, I played basketball and I started to play drums because I used to play drums in my car. Uh, my old girlfriend Yvonne would drive around and, and I would play the police, you know. And I said, hey, you're pretty good. So one day I, uh, she got me a drum set, an old rickety drum set. And before I even play, played it, I painted it red, gold, and green uh -huh. without knowing what the colors were. Oh, really? Yeah, so I'm going to tell the people out there. The red, gold, and green, this is the flag of Ethiopia. And I know Marcus Garvey, he said, um, red for the blood, gold for the for the gold that they stole, and green for the land. Which is a nice concept, but the re the reality of red, gold, and green, I can tell you, confial, because I heard it from the, from the high priest himself in Ethiopia. The red, gold, and green stands for the three sons of Noah. Ham, Shem, and Japheth. Nothing else. Right. Ham, Shem, and Japheth. So that is the fabric of Ethiopia. They still have that mentality of one people, one race, one world, mm -hmm. one God, the God of Abraham, and that's it. It doesn't matter if you're whatever, if you're fat, tall, Indian, it doesn't matter. There's only one family. So at the end of the day, can be as okay. You know, we're the ones, or you're the one. No, there's only one family, my brother. Mm -hmm. And there's only one Almighty, you know. So let's everyone be humble. Let's everyone go the same way. Some people can't do it. That's why you have Rasta people. You're a Rasta people. <laughs> That's why you have your program on Rasta. There's a reason for that. Mm -hmm. Because no one put a gun to your head. You're doing this because, hey. And most of the people doesn't do Rasta. They don't understand it. Mm -hmm. Many call if you chosen. So know that. You're doing a very big job to expose the story of, of the Almighty. Because many people want to hide this story. Many call if you chosen. Yeah, many call if you chosen. Not that I'm chosen, but I would like to think that I'm doing this for a reason. Oh, yeah, you're doing and it. And no one put it to my head. And the more and more I do it, the more I realize that it's very important and I'm well needed. Because the story of Ethiopia and the story of Christ and the story of Haile Selassie, the Lion of Judah and the Land of Judah, is a very important story. And that it's been hidden. It's been hidden, you know? It's been hidden. And so my job is to reveal the story, you know? Because it's been... Tapao. Yeah, yeah. Europa lo tapó, lo tapó. Le pintaron blanco. Si no blanco. Es la semilla de de Solomon. La semilla direct lineage from David, Solomon. But now, to Ethiopia. The queen of Ethiopia. There's a marriage. And that seed is now in Ethiopia. So now it must come from Ethiopia. It can't come from this land. So when Christ comes, it comes from this land. It comes from this land. So check it out. It's a new story for a lot of people, but that's the reality. I didn't make this up. There's a reality. Solomon had a child with Ethiopia. With, with, with sheep. That's, that's, that's a reality. It's not my idea. I heard the story. I was like, wow, this is brilliant. I love this. Now it makes sense. Now the la rompa cabeza que me dieron desde pequeño uh -huh. que no hace sentido ahora tiene sentido porque ahora now now it's balanced. I love it. Of course. How come the, the African was never involved in this thing? And as a kid, they always said that Los Tres Reyes, Gaspar, Melchior, and Bartasar. But there was a black king. Uh -huh. well, how come the blacks are slaves over here, but there's a king? Where is, where is this land that he's a king of? Well, what land is this that's so special? Well, that's the land of Ethiopia. The land of Prester Juan. Prester Juan, that's what Europe used to call Ethiopia. Prester Juan. Prester Juan. Juan, like Juan. Uh -huh. Juan Cabeza de Pan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now I stand.